Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here with this Tuesday mountain weather update. I want to take you up to Winter Park here first, and that sun just breaking through. Really nice morning glow up there at Winter Park. The view from Lunch Rock off to the east right here. So the central and northern mountains of Colorado today could get brushed by about an inch of accumulation. Nothing big. Nothing to write home about. Um, let me take you to... Um, so this is going to be Loveland Ski Area, and man, this is a beautiful sunrise up there, that morning glow. So you're looking down the I-70 corridor to the east, that morning glow, that is beautiful. And, and Loveland's another place that could get brushed by up to an inch of accumulation here today. One more stop up in Summit County, and that sun trying to break through in Breckenridge. Uh, but some cloud cover in the way. And, and you might pick up an inch of accumulation today in Summit County, Breckenridge, Keystone, around the corner in Copper and Vale. Um, but pretty cloudy right there on that view. Um, let me take you to radar across the uh, the west here. A couple of things to mention. We'll go into Colorado in a second, but you can see this wave right here coming out of Idaho and approaching the Tetons, Yellowstone, uh, moving through Big Sky. So that's part of a little wave, and that's part of what's moving that snow through Colorado as well. The lion's share of the moisture is up in the Pacific Northwest, B.C., northern Idaho, northwest Montana. That's where this rich flow continues for today. Then it dries up. Wednesday and Thursday are much drier days across the Pacific Northwest. Okay, let's go into Colorado. Tiny little area of precip here sliding across the central to northern mountains. Again, up to an inch. <clears throat> in most areas of uh, total snowfall today. So that is a teeny tiny one. Up in the northeast, a warm storm system moving up through the Ohio Valley into Pennsylvania and New York with quite a bit of rain versus snow. So this is a much warmer scenario than what we were dealing with just a week ago. I mean, that's for sure. But there will be some snow accumulation light today up in upstate New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine at the ski areas. Okay, let's take a look at the west here. So this is water vapor satellite imagery in the low levels. And the oranges and reds are going to be your drier air in those levels. And then your moistures and the whites and the blues. So you have a little kink right here in the flow. That's moving through. That's what's going to produce that little bit of snow for the Tetons. And going to brush. It's brushing the central and northern mountains of Colorado. And also maybe a snow shower over the Wasatch. More importantly, here's the last part of our atmospheric river. This is the last storm system that's moving through the Pacific Northwest right now. Behind it, that's an important storm for us, and so is this one because they both play into the extended forecast. One will help to break down this. There's a ridge of high pressure. Let me mark it. Across a lot of the desert southwest. It's very warm and dry down here. But these two areas of low pressure will come in and help to break that down. And the second one will grab cold air from Canada. So the first one will sacrifice, and the second will come in with a better chance of snow and colder air. In fact, that's all in my bullet points here. Moist Pacific flow today, and then it's drier tomorrow. Southwest to high pressure ridge. Now the next storm system, everything for a lot of the west will start to change. Especially California, Nevada, Utah, Colorado, New Mexico, and Arizona on or after 3-2, when we bring in those, those two storm systems off the Pacific. First one will break down the high pressure ridge. The second one comes in and pulls down colder air, delivers colder air. And there might even be another storm behind all of that for 3-6 and 3-7. All right, my uh, snow timeline looks like this. So best odds of snow, Big Sky, the Wasatch, Tetons, Colorado, Interior, BC, the Pacific Northwest, Tahoe, and the Northeast. Um, so for the Wasatch, some light snow possibly brushing the area early today. Your better chance is on 3-2, 3, two, three, three, three four, um, with the pattern change. Tetons, pretty light shots. Colorado light initially, and then your best shot is 3-2 through 3-5. Um, interior BC, a couple of different light shots right there. Um, Tahoe, your best shot is probably 3-2 with light to moderate accumulations. All right, let me drill down. So this is Alta, Utah. Forecast mediagram. <clears throat> this is effective about 9,000 feet of elevation. And man, there is just nothing on this. <clears throat> Even if you get a snow shower 
um, this morning. This isn't even picking up on it. And this takes us all the way through the morning of the 28th. Uh, winds may be gusty today up to 30, 35, 40 miles per hour. And yeah, it's going to start out very warm at 35 up there at 9,000 feet this morning. Temperatures will gradually fall into the 20s, maybe even the teens by late today. Tomorrow, teens for and even 20s for high temps, and then much warmer on Thursday, back above freezing. So there is some cold air that quickly slides in behind this little kink in the flow, but it warms right back up by the end of the week. All right, so that's Alta. Let me take you up to Jenny Lake, Wyoming. So Jenny Lake, this is effective about 86, 8,700 feet up there. This has that wave coming through today with potentially an inch of accumulation. Maybe it's a couple of inches, but the winds are going to be gusty today up to 50 to 55 miles per hour as this front approaches. And it starts out warm at about 28, gradually falls. The temperature turns colder this afternoon tonight into the low teens. Tomorrow starts out colder to 21 for the high, much warmer on Thursday, 32 degrees at about 8,600 feet. And it's dry after this. Um, for the Tetons. Okay, let me just uh, talk about the pattern. <clears throat> and we'll start this um, today. All right, here's the jet stream forecast. So this is up at about 30,000 feet. This is the steering wind, essentially. And what I'm looking for are the brighter colors. The greens are pretty strong, but I'm really looking for the yellows, the oranges, and the reds. Um, that's what's escorting the bigger storm systems around and separating the really cold air from the warm air. Um, that's your biggest temperature gradient right there. All right, so here's what I'm seeing. You've got a little wave coming through, obviously, Wyoming, brushing Utah and Colorado. You kind of see it with that jet energy. All right, here's Wednesday. <clears throat> All right, so by the time we get into Thursday, you can see this cutoff low approaching the California coast, moves in on Friday, then it moves towards the four corners by the time we get into Saturday. But notice what's happening, happening with the northern jet, the polar jet. It's arcing way to the north. And that's bottling up all the cold air in the Canada. So it's very warm across the lower 48. With this initial cutoff low, it is really warm. But that's going to change. All right, here's Sunday. That, that cutoff moves through Colorado, New Mexico, um, Utah, and then it moves away. Now, here comes the bigger change right there. So here's Monday. You've got a pretty good storm digging into California, and it appears as though it's going to have access to colder air. It's going to pull that in from the north. Jet consolidates. Northern branch sort of disappears, and it consolidates with the southern branch. By Tuesday, you've got a good storm flow from California through Nevada, Utah, Arizona, New Mexico, and Colorado with some snow on the northern side for the Tetons. And then on Wednesday, it's more of the same. So a pretty good flow there by the time we get into next week once we see that pattern shift with the jet stream. Okay, let's look at the timing of this, of this precipitation. Um, so here we are. Now this is, we're going to start this early on, early today at 5 a.m. So when you see this, the greens are going to be your rain. The whites and the blues are going to be your snow accumulation with this. This is the forecast radar. So there's the brush, the tiny front coming through, maybe the Wasatch, the central and northern mountains of Colorado. You can see a little bit over, the, over that area, a little bit painted there. And, of course, you've got that wave moving through the Tetons and the best precipitations up in the Pacific Northwest. All right, so by the time we get to this afternoon... Still a little, a tiny bit of action over the central and northern mountains of Colorado, the Tetons, but the heaviest precip's all up in northern Idaho, northwest Montana, the Pacific Northwest, and B.C. That is the final remnant of this atmospheric river. And you can see it. By the time we get into Wednesday morning, it is much drier across the west with this ridge of high pressure taking firm control. And man, it is in place through Thursday, Thursday afternoon, Friday morning, Friday afternoon, very warm across the west beneath this ridge of high pressure through the end of the week. But you start to see a little bit of action moving into California. That's our cutoff low. It's minor. It moves fast. And then it moves towards the four corners. All right, so here's Sunday in the morning. A wave of snow for western and southwest Colorado, northern New Mexico. Strengthens a little, then it moves away. But here comes the bigger game. Here comes the big game in town. And it hits California. This is Monday in the morning. 
heavier snow for the Sierra, and then it expands. Here's Monday in the afternoon, and now we've got snow over the top of the Wasatch, the Tetons, Colorado, Nevada, and the Sierra with colder air filtering in here. That's the pattern shift. And by the so that's the end of it by Tuesday. Um, and it would continue to, if we were to look at Wednesday, the storm would continue to march across Utah and Colorado. All right, the western snow map. Here you go. This is through Saturday late. So this captures everything just before the pattern shift on or after 3-2. Um, light stuff in Colorado, and I'll zoom in on that in a second, but it's generally an inch in the central and northern mountains. Very light for Utah, mainly under an inch. A little bit of snow there for California with that cutoff coming in on Saturday. Um, but most of everything's up in the northern tier, Pacific Northwest. A couple of inches, two or three for the Tetons. Uh, about four up there, Bridger Bowl, Big Sky. 6 to 12. Whenever you see those bright pinks, that's generally a foot of snow. The lighter pinks are 6 inches, so you're looking at kind of a range of 6 to 12 or more through parts of northern Idaho. And some of the skiers like Brundage up to Schweitzer, 6 to 10, maybe 6 to 10 inches of accumulation. Uh, 2 to 4 up from Whitefish up through northwest Montana. Uh, interior BC looking at 2 to 4 inches. Revelstoke, Kicking Horse, Red Mountain, and Fernie. And probably two to four down into parts of uh, Bam Sunshine and Marmot Basin. Uh, the bigger numbers, you can see some of the bright pinks of 12 plus up there in the Pacific Northwest, the high cascades, the volcanoes, uh, anywhere from Whistler to uh, Crystal, Rainier, Stevens, Timberline, uh, potentially six to what, 14 inches there, and less as you go south. And that takes us through Saturday. Let me zoom in on that for Colorado. Very light stuff today, uh, maybe an inch in some places, possibly two over the flat tops and over Cameron Pass and Buffalo Pass. But again, this takes us through Saturday, so very light stuff. If we were to look beyond this, then we'd see much bigger accumulation once the pattern shifts. But we'll end on the big western map here. Again, for a lot of the uh, uh, the lower 48, the lower, the southern tier, California, Nevada, uh, Utah, Colorado, New Mexico, Arizona. It's just a waiting game until we get to 3, 2, 3, 3, 3, 4, and 3, 5. And then that brings in a much more active pattern for those areas. Guys, thanks for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.